and welcome to part three of the spinning wheel slash motor tutorial that we've been progressively doing over the past couple of days. Today we're going to be lighting and texturing our objects and animation. Uh, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that I will be using a softbox in this and uh, I did make a video on how to model a softbox and control it using Expresso. So, um, if I leave that link in the description, if you haven't got a softbox from like a Grayscale Gorilla or Don's Light Kit, um, go and watch that video and I'll teach you how to make a softbox. So when you've made that, come straight back to this video. I'm going to start off by going to my content browser and I'm going to use this overhead softbox from Grayscale Gorilla. And uh, I'm going to put the brightness up to about 130%. I'm also going to leave it like that. We're going to make our floor material, so let's double click below. Let's open up our scene here, and we're going to apply this to the background and also our floor. We'll close that back up now. We can double click here, or we can turn off specular. We can go into color and let's get a middle gray, so I'm thinking 44, 44, and 44 for the RGB values. And um, that looks all good to me, so let's go into reflection. And I think the brightness we can put down to something say 30%, and our blurriness maybe to 7. And uh, when we did in the last tutorial, you can see we put this compositing tag on, which was uh, self shadowing off and compositing background on. It'll mean that we have no backdrop, um, but we still get the shadows, which is really good. So that's all good. Um, and in our overhead softbox, we don't want it to be seen by the camera. And we can go into it a bit more, and we just need to turn off scene by reflection. Because we're not going to be using that to reflect, get any reflections, we're just going to use it to light our scene. So you can see here we've got this really nice uh, floor here. We could probably add a bit of texture into that because it does look very flat at the moment. So uh, let's add a bit of texture into there. We can maybe bump, bump up our uh, reflection a little bit more as well. So let's go into our bump channel and we're going to add a noise. You can see we've, we've already got this texture here. And I'm probably going to lower the strength down because we don't want it to be very, very, very bumpy. Let's say like 4 or 5%. And I'm going to use a random one. I think that one there just gives it a bit of texture. Maybe you can, you can try any one you want. This one here is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, let's leave it like that. So it just you won't see it straight away, not until we've done a, a few more progressive passes but um, it will give us some cool shape reflections as well which is really cool um, but you can't see those quite yet due to the fact that uh, we I was just checking we got uh, ambient occlusion on which we haven't we've uh, got our shadows in the way so make sure your density of your shadows say on 70% just to lower those down a tad and um, Next thing we're going to do for our lighting, um, you can see if we go into create oops, uh, load material preset and you want to go into studio, sketch, oh uh, no, sorry which one was it, this one here, visualize materials, HDRI and you can just pick one of these and it will be fine. So I'm going to pick HDRI 01 and what we're going to do is create a sphere and let's crank this radius up to say 3 thousand because that'll fill our whole thing and we can right mouse click the sphere cinema 4d tags and uh, compositing and you want to turn off cast shadows um, receive shadows seen by camera seen by literally seen by everything you can not reflection though and we're just going to apply that to our sphere and we can just double click here and just hide that and drop that into our scene and call this uh, reflections and that will give us some nice reflections on the material we're about to make on our torus. This is going to be quite an in-depth uh, material. So let's call this uh, wheel mat, like wheel material. So let's start off with this. So in the color, we're going to go into texture and we want a Loomis uh, shader. So that would be in here, in effects and Loomis, or Loomis, I don't know how you say it really that was my phone and uh, the color we are going to be setting uh, 
for the first specular this is um, we're in the shader at the moment so at the moment we want the algorithm on internal which is good it, I think we can just leave most of this um, just maybe darken our color a tad or just leave it it's really entirely up to you uh, let's undo that and in specular one this is where we're going to start editing some stuff so we're going to put the color to 211, 211, and 211. That will give us a nice middle grey there. We're going to put the intensity down to about 90%, I believe. Make it not too intense. The size will be on 5%. Now let's put the glare, let's leave the glare actually. I think the glare will look good because you can see if we crank the glare up, it's just that small white dot in the middle. We don't need that too big. Uh, so that's all good as it is. Let's go into specular 2 here, and we want our color to be 156. These are all grays, 156 and 156. And I'm just going to click OK, and then I'm going to right mouse click here and put this to Object GI, and that will give us a different look to our material. And we can put our intensity on 50, it's good actually. Uh, Sci yeah, everything looks good to me there. Um, so let's go into specular three, which is even cooler. So we're going to go into color, and we want this to be two hundred and five. Two hundred and five, and two hundred and five. Whoops, that's not five oh five. Two oh five. Okay. So we've got this nice like uh, effect here, and I think we can probably leave all of that as well um, I haven't really messed around with many settings so we can put on some and I'm not allowed to say this anistrophy or something um, so we can click active for our anistrophy we can put our projection to planar which is pretty cool um, and we want the X roughness let's crank that up to say 800 um, the amplitude scale yeah everything looks good to me there so that looks like a good material so far, which is all good. So, yeah, that looks good. Uh, maybe make actually in our Loomis color, in our shader, I think we can make this fully black. Yeah, that's a much better effect there that we're trying to get. So we can just drop this straight onto our torus here. We don't need to put it onto each uh, one individually. Um, so now I'm just uh, going to get we, I think we can start off with our diffusion of this material. So in our diffusion, we want it to affect the specular and the reflection. So we're going to add a noise. Where is noise? There it is. Noise. And we want this mix strength to be on about 40%. So we don't want it to be too, oops, not 50, 40. We don't want it to be too strong. Let's head on into our noise shader. And for the noise, uh, I think we can just leave maybe the space actually yeah let's leave the space there that looks quite good like that and let's put our global scale on something like 700% just make it very very blurred out here and everything seems to look good to me there you can always try and change your noise to uh, electric or something like this for different effects which is pretty cool so I'll leave that like that. Let's scroll down and let's put our low clip to about, let's say, 20% and our high clip to 60%. So that's all good. Leave our brightness and contrast like that. So let's go to our reflection because we want some reflection in there. So let's uh, lower this down. To, well, actually, let's, let's just keep it like that and put our blur up to 5%. And um, that should look good to me like that, um, actually no, let's lower that down, sorry, for our reflection, is it not going, okay, it's not going to lower, but okay, maybe it was just uh, going a bit slower, because we've got quite heavy material here, so, yep, that looks good, let's say, 40% um, be good, uh, let's go into our specular, let's have a look if we need to edit anything from our specular, Everything actually in our specular looks absolutely fine. I uh, don't believe we need to edit any of that at all, which is better than uh, 
having to edit loads, so it's quite an in-depth tutorial for the nice material that we've got there. Have a quick render and see what we're looking at. We could leave this for 35 uh, times uh, progressive render, sorry, but I'm not going to do that. And we can always turn on in our physical renderer. If you got, if you're running on R12, you'll have to put on uh, global illumination. But because we've got uh, a progressive, uh, no, a physical renderer engine, we can put on indirect illumination, and that will uh, help us bounce our light around between the objects and the floor a little bit more. So we get more of these more highlights, uh, which is better contrasted look. So that's all good, and uh, we can leave this to render for 35 passes if you want, just to check how it's uh, all looking. But I think that's it for that uh, tutorial. So we've got basically you just need to render this out now. So we can hit play. You can see we've got our nice effect here with our nice materials you can remember you can always change these materials but yeah so I'm going to save this and um, we're going to head over to After Effects now just to do a bit of tweaking with uh, the colors um, so I'm not going to render this one out because I've already got the one from the example and I'm going to use that in After Effects so we're going to I'm going to close this but you're going to go up to your render settings you're going to choose a place where you want to save it, like here in this file section, you just click these three dots and hit this button here to render that out. So I'm going to quit Cinema 4D. So you can see here I've got my camera angle here for the first one. So let's head over into After Effects to edit this out. Wait for After Effects to load shouldn't take too long let's have a look if we've got anything else open no, doesn't look so no it's because of all the plugins I believe but it shouldn't take too long from now and uh, this is like uh, my explorer or my computer from a Windows computer. So you want to find your rendered file straight from Cinema 4D and just make sure on the project tab in uh, After Effects and just drag that in. So there we go, it's imported and we can drag this down to this small black box here and that will create a perfect size composition with the perfect length as well and the perfect frame rate. So that's really cool. As you can see there we've got my uh, animation so that's all good and make sure it's on full red so we can get a nice effect we're going to go to layer new solid and let's make this black fully black okay and you can see this mask button here with the square we're going to select a ellipse we're going to double click that and you can see we've got this nice mask of the ellipse around there and I'm going to invert this so it's around the edge and I'm going to hit F on my keyboard and that's going to bring up our mask feather so we can just make that feathered and we can hit E, oops sorry, M, M, not E, and we can uh, just expand our mask a little bit more just to give us a quick vignette which uh, focuses all of the, f the uh, attention onto the uh, rings there. So we can hit, um, we can, sorry, let's hit enter and let's rename our solid. I've because it's Cinema 4D, I keep double clicking from used to it. So we're going to call this a Vin. How do you spell it? Vin. Yeah, that's the one. And we can also hit T, and that'll bring down our opacity there, just so it's not too harsh on our main subject. So now we can go to Layer, New. We can add a adjustment layer. Let's call this CC for color correction. We're going to go to Effect color correction curves and what we can do is we can bring down our shadows or we can lighten up our scene a little bit maybe just crush some of the highlights down just a tad just to give it a nice contrast maybe just bring down some of the shadows a little bit more we could add start to add some color in there but you could cross process this really really quickly I'll just see what it looks like see if you uh, would be 
wanting to do this. I'm not sure you would. It doesn't really help to the mood, so I'm just going to reset that and uh, quickly colour correct that again. So that's it, and uh, maybe just because we've crushed some of those, uh, we've crushed some of our shadows. Sorry, we can just bring that vignette in just a little bit more and uh, hit MM and just uh, bring that expansion in just a tad. There we go. And then uh, at the end, I just basically animated some text in here that just said tutorial. Just faded that in, and uh, yeah, I don't think you'll really need to do that, but. I'm sure you're now to fade in text anyway. So, yeah. So that's the full tutorial for you guys. Um, I hope it's helped. Um, I literally was just messing around in Cinema 4D when I found out how to do this tutorial. Um, so if you kind of like this series style tutorials, then please let me know because I'll be happy to do some more larger tutorials with the uh, sections rather than doing big long ones. But yeah. Um, yeah, comment, rate and subscribe uh, if it ha has helped you at all. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you shortly. Cheers.